Hi, and welcome to another of uh, Claremont Calling. We have two um, items for, uh, for you this week. Firstly, we will be hearing a bit more from Miriam Murphy, who's been working um, for us since, uh, since March. Miriam joined us just as lockdown was starting, and so folks may well have heard her leading in prayer and doing some readings and so on and, uh, here, but we're going to find out a wee bit more of her story and, and her background. The second item is a song, the new song that's been written by a friend of Karen and, and myself, a man called Doug Gay, who's a lecturer in uh, practical theology at Glasgow University. He's also a very keen and enthusiastic and able musician and sometimes a songwriter. And Doug has written a song which, um, expressing some of the breakdown, some of the loneliness of um, lockdown time, and also a song that looks forward beyond that. And it's a bit like the Old Testament prophets, actually, in that many of the Old Testament prophecies um, were, had a fulfillment that was quite immediate, but also looked forward to something greater and a, and a much further horizon. And so in Doug's song, there is both the uh, looking forward to an end of lockdown and being able to meet up again, but there's also a uh, looking forward to that final great feast of the kingdom of heaven and the great reunion of all of God's saints in eternity. And um, Karen Palmer has uh, put together some photographs for a video that will accompany the song. Enjoy. Hi, for Clement Calling, we thought we'd uh, have a little chat with uh, Miriam Murphy, who started work with us at Clermont just as soon as the lockdown was kicking in. So although Miriam has been working and has done you know, quite a lot um, behind, the, behind the scenes, we've not had the, the chance to, to see her. So, um, and one of the things we'd noted about, um, about you, Miriam, was a, a kind of a mixture in your background. There's something about Finland in there. There's something about Switzerland in there. Yeah. Which is which? Well, I've got a Finnish mother and Swiss dad. And I was born as a Swiss citizen in Finland, in Northern Finland. So it gets a bit complicated. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, but you've still, have you got family still in both places? Yes. So my family split up. Some of my siblings are in Switzerland and some in Finland. And, and so um, I, I tend to go to either country on holidays to visit some of the family, but don't see them right. too often. Right. Unfortunately. And are you the only one that came to Scotland? Yeah. So are you usually very good at seeing the light and doing the right thing? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Follow the lead. <laughs> right, right. And as well as uh, a mix of um, different countries uh, there in your background, there's, there's quite a bit of a mixture of, of church experience. Yeah, well, I was actually raised unchurched. My mum um, was a believer, so I always had knowledge and faith in God. I did never had really a doubt about God or Jesus. Um, but um, as it comes to churches, I was actually late. I was a teenager before I started going to church regularly. And it was a free evangelical church in Switzerland first. And then in Scotland, when I came to Scotland as an exchange student, I went to a charismatic or Pentecostal church. And then when I came back to live in Scotland, I was a number of years in a Baptist church. And right. Then after a move, I was also in a, another free evangelical church before we found our home in Church of Scotland. Right, right. So does that mean that um, you've experienced a whole range of very different approaches to, for example, worship? Yeah, yeah. Different musical traditions? Yeah, and theology, I think. Yeah. Especially yeah. theology, I think. There are, you know, there are subtle differences, but they actually make, I think it makes a quite a huge difference as how right. to live and how to what your attitude is to living and to worship and yeah well i think i in some ways they're very small differences and in some ways they are still quite marked differences right uh-huh and do you have a favorite at the moment yes church of scotland of course <laughs> <laughs> i feel huh? very much at home here and i, I started studying reformed theology in the highland theological college some i think it was 2012 when i started my studies and really it was a, a, a discovery of um, the wealth and heritage of the reformed theology and really fell in love with it. It was like just fit it for me perfectly. Right, right. So was that a theology degree that you did with the Highland Theological College? Yeah, so I started um, 
for uh, other purposes. I wasn't even thinking I'd ever graduate. Um, at the at the time, it was just something I kind of tried because I wanted to go into ministry. And it's just time went by and ended up doing the degree and finishing it. Right, right. Are you keen on studying? Are you the kind of person that can put your nose into a book and be there for half an hour? Or? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why unfortunately? Yeah. Well, I think because um, there there is a weakness, I think, in sometimes in in um, ministry as well. That there's a lot of emphasis on learn being learned and and theology understanding theology and maybe too little sometimes of the practical side of what does it mean to live as a christian and how do we reach people i don't think we reach people by clever arguments i think right. we reach people by living in um face to face and allowing ourselves to be seen and allowing you know being vulnerable and open to people and um sometimes the learning can go in the middle you know if i'm sitting in my room and just reading i'm not meeting people and i'm not okay. engaging okay but how do we how do we do this uh, meeting people and stuff during lockdown? I mean, surely that's the face to face things become very very difficult for us as church, is it not? Yeah, it's a real challenge, and it was a challenge as you say. I just was thrown in the deep end, um, starting the work, and I was looking forward to meeting all these families and people and and, and building relationships, and then I'm basically forbidden to meet anybody. So mm. it is a, it's been a real challenge. I mean, it's for all of us been a learning curve. Um, I'm not thinking of it as something very negative in a sense because God knew what was going to happen and God has a plan and I think um, we are just um, going along with what is what the opportunities are given to us and I think any change gives us an opportunity to do something new and that right. is exciting bit. Good. let's see what Good. we can do and um, is there anything about lockdown that you've enjoyed yes definitely so I used to homeschool my girls and now we are all told to homeschool. I love the fact that everybody has to homeschool because I've been trying to persuade my friends, you know, you've got to homeschool, you ought to homeschool, it's so much fun. So now the whole country has got a flavor of what, what it means to homeschool. So I don't feel so much like an odd one out. And um, everybody will share this experience now. And it was really nice getting back to homeschooling with the kids, having them together. Primary school and secondary school can divide the siblings and now they're back together and it's kind of nice. Yeah. I've been blessed. Right right and what's been the hardest bit of the lockdown just not being able to meet people face to face friends um and, and and knowing that people are actually suffering from it and not being able to really reach out um and feeling a bit helpless can't do anything about it okay yeah okay well thanks for that. one more one more question i want to ask you then go ahead you said you said something about lockdown giving us opportunities yeah i mean do, do you think that the church has got things to learn here or can good come out of this for the church is is this part of god's plan that we should be like this yeah well i was in the conference sanctuary first conference just yesterday thanks to claremont by the way and um, in it it was discussing about um the how the churches have responded to this lockdown situation and how we have suddenly become all online you know all our activities and the challenges that that has posed but also the opportunities and also that what how we're gonna take this momentum of being online further to the next stage are we going back just to the model that we knew or can we fundamentally change something and did god met was it part of god's purpose that we go through this so that we will be pushed to a change to be more online um and it's not to say that online is everything you know that was one of the outcomes of one of the discussions yesterday that actually um when we are forced to being online we actually realize the privilege of what it what it means to be together physically that there is you know we really miss that and we understand that there is that benefit so so it doesn't necessarily mean we all now have to be online but it also means that we definitely do have to take it more seriously and the opportunities that are out there online because we've seen that more people have come into our churches through that so let's not lose that let's just keep that momentum going no matter what happens next Great. Well, thanks very much. We've um, we've had you and seen you leading in prayer a few times in services and readings and um, and speaking to us at one of our Holy Week services. Um, so thanks just for that uh, few moments of of chat when we've been able to um, hear a bit more about the the personal story. I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Um, but in the meantime, for uh, the next bit of, of Clement calling, we're going to have something that uh, that's being introduced to us by Karen Palmer. Brilliant. Thank you, Gordon. I missed you 
in my bed when I was staying away I missed being in church when I was struggling to pray I missed you at the table when I cooked up far too much I missed your hand in my hand when I hungered for your touch Oh, I missed you Yes, I missed you Yes, I missed you I missed you in the bar when I was drinking here alone I missed you in the mornings when it didn't feel like home I missed you in my grieving, you were somewhere far away I missed you on my birthday, it just didn't feel the same Oh, I missed you Yes, I missed you We'll be together. 